right, Lexi, we got some work to do. All right, hey guys, this is one of the local filmmakers, Carlos Diaz, El Carlos Diaz on YouTube. It's his workstation, and uh, it needs some help. <laughs> it uh, crashes every time he tries to stabilize anything in Resolve, which points me at the video drivers, most likely. I put an RX 580 in it for him as I'm doing this makeover, just because he had an old um, GT 760 or something like that, 745, with very little video RAM. And I'm finding that through my benchmarking to be incredibly important when you're building a machine. Get something with as much video RAM as you can afford. In this case, this card has 8 gigabytes of video RAM. It's an old card I was using testing for the channel. But as we move past the RX 580 land, considering here's another one here, um, I decided he could have this one to go with his still quad-core Intel chip. Um, and then I'm going to add an SSD to his machine instead of three spinning drives so that we can speed it up, but also so that I can disconnect his primary Windows drive and save it for him in case he got something there he really has to have. Otherwise, this will be his new boot drive, his new Resolve drive, and it should be cranking pretty good. All right, so I'll jump back in when I get Windows installed and we can look at what happens from a base install, how we move forward. All right, here's the thing. I uh, tried cleaning it off in the shack and then I realized there is way too much disgusting in there. Uh, so we're gonna try and whew, we're gonna try and get it out with this or else I'm gonna have to take the heat sink apart. Okay, I had to get a long skinny screwdriver so that I could take the fan off. Here we are at his new desktop. I went to blackmagicdesign.com slash support and downloaded the latest. Now here you can see it's trying to get me to install the DaVinci Resolve panels, the keyboards, the Fairlight Audio Accelerator utility. These are things you don't need unless you have the hardware associated with those. So let's go with what I'll call a base install. It's going to be the Postgres install for those of you on Studio. Otherwise, just the DaVinci Resolve base package. This will take a minute as it's installing a fantastic program. You will get a pop-up that says take the new tour. And when you get that, if this is your first time using Resolve, I highly suggest you do it. In this case, however, I'm going to walk you through the manual configuration of DaVinci Resolve. Now with Resolve open, I'll go to DaVinci Resolve menu preferences. Here you have the option to choose in memory and GPU your GPU configuration. Auto typically works, however, you want to make sure if you've got an AMD card, it's running OpenCL mode. If you have an NVIDIA card, it's working with your CUDA cores. On the left further, you'll see decode options. Here you want to make sure that you've got your hardware acceleration turned on for whatever you might have there. You could see Intel QuickSync, you could see an AMD or NVIDIA checkbox. You definitely want to use those options, as this will hardware accelerate the encoding for H.264 and H.265 video, effectively making both your timeline and your final render faster. Next on the video and audio I.O. tab, if you're going to override the system setting, keep that in mind because DaVinci Resolve will always drive your audio to the option you select. I've seen people not be able to find their audio because it's going through some headphones while their system is playing music just fine. Now we switch menuing systems, go to the file and project settings menu. This is where you set the settings for each individual project that you're working in. And skip the presets tab because we'll come back to it. I'm going to set up a 4K timeline, 24P, for myself so that I can edit in it. This will start to become my template for future projects as I go forward. I'm going to change the location of my cache. That cache here is where Resolve stores optimized media as well as where it caches anything you're actively working with in the timeline when you have caching options turned on. The important thing to note, I changed it because I have multiple hard drives in this computer and it allows me to offload all of that spinning disk work from the OS and DaVinci Resolve drive. This is an optimization trick here in Resolve that is worth buying another drive for. Now that I've got the settings that I want, I'm going to save them as a preset here on the preset tab. I've set it as 4K default. However, Carlos works in Blackmagic Design's B-Roll off of a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. So I need to make sure that I've got him set with his own preset that he can use. 
So I'll go down to the Camera Raw tab. And here for the raw, raw profile, I choose Blackmagic Design Raw. And I'm going to leave it decoding full quality. I'll save this as a preset 4K default raw. This allows him to load these presets when he starts a new project and not have to go through and reconfigure any of the settings. Next, if you haven't done it yet, you'll want to hit DaVinci Resolve Keyboard Customization in the top left-hand corner and choose your presets. If you're used to other media editors, you can come up here and choose those keystrokes and key bindings, or you can create your own or modify one of the existing. I took the DaVinci Resolve and have modified it for my own needs in one or two places. Through Movie Magic, Carlos already has his machine back and he's thrilled with it, but I want to show you a couple things I do to set up any new workstation. The first thing I'll do is go over to Sound Library. Click up here in the three dots and choose Add Library. Now I'll browse to wherever I store all of my Foley, all my sound effects, anything I've got stored that are then searchable. And it makes them searchable inside the Music and Media tabs of DaVinci Resolve. The next thing that I want to do is add my LUTs. So I go over to my color page, come up to the top with LUTs, and here I'm going to see please open the file location on disk. So that's by right clicking on the LUTs folder in the left hand side and it'll now show you where all your LUTs are stored. There's some default LUTs but if you have some that you're bringing with you, you can throw them in here and the next time you restart Resolve they'll show up right here. The last thing you can do, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, is come set up your default workspace. In your workspace, you can use a video clean feed, which would output to another monitor, or you can use the dual screen mode, which adds, uh, or you can use dual screen mode, which adds all of your vector scopes, your media pools to another monitor, so that you've got more room to work with. So now you've seen how I set up DaVinci Resolve. Now you see what a computer looks like after four years of filmmaker neglect, and you see how to set up DaVinci Resolve from scratch. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and like if you like more DaVinci Resolve content, and have a great day.